This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 562 for July 30th, 2018. Error on the side of spoiler. Redacted happens to redacted. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston, and joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hello. Uh, fair warning here at the beginning, I'm really sick. Yep. And uh, NyQuil is going to, or DayQuil, I should say. Boy, if I took NyQuil before this, it'd be like, all right, let's. it's a race to the bottom. Let's, <laughs> let's see how long I can stay awake. Uh, the DayQuil will be wearing off at some point, which means I will, I will be far more sick than I am right now. Um, so, fair warning, and we're also just going to do the first segment of this week's episode because I really want to go lay down um, and watch some of the dumb shows I've been watching, so, uh, instead of having to be in this sweat box, because it's terrible up here. Yep. Uh, so, let's just dive right into uh, Moonpeer. What have you been playing this past week? Okay, so, here we go for the shows this episode of the year. I've been playing games. Boston, how about you? Hey, games too. Um, see you next week. That's it for the for the show this week, folks. We'll see you next week. Uh, WWE. <laughs> I hope this isn't the first episode anyone's listening I to. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Last week's episode was really good. Yes, and I'm sure next week's will be good too. Um, yes. So let's get started with Lego Avengers. Um, Legos. Oh. Legos Marvel Avengers One, I believe it was. I think. I don't know. I think. Don't know. Either way, I beat it. I finally got all of the DLC done, all of the main game done. I kind of deliberately left the get the 100% um, fountain achievement to the last achievement mm. because I wanted nice. it to be my last achievement. Um, I love the DLC in that. I love the additional characters, the stories, the, like the things that they do. It's really good. The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., DLC that they have is actually really good because it starts with Melinda May, who's a character from the show, um, saying, this is a top-level S.H.I.E.L.D. announcement for anybody um, for only designed for people who have access to Season 2. Spoiler warning. <laughs> it's like, great. That's pretty Just good. great. The fact that they actually reference that is is really, really cool. But, no, it's it's a LEGO game. We've already talked about them a lot, like we, I think me and you are the only people over 15 who are fans of the series. <laughs> yes. So, you know, play it, don't play it, it's up to you. It's fun. I liked it. And I, yeah. again, just the references that that thing, should, that that thing has is fantastic. Um, I think I mentioned it ages ago, but as Phil Coulson driving in his car from the show, and you get the achievement, it's a magical place. Yeah. Like, it's great. So yeah. so, yeah, Lego Marvel Avengers is really, really fun. Uh, let's talk about Elite Dangerous. Uh, how mm, yeah. we have essentially figured out a way to help any new people immediately have access to huge ships. Ooh. Because with not the not the most recent update, but the update before, they started what's known as a wing mission, which mm. is the leader of a wing can start a mission and invite the wing, like the people in the same party as them, into that mission. Oh, okay. And because it's designed for three to three to four people, that essentially the reward payout on it is ridiculous. Mm. So your starting ship it costs I think two thousand credits to buy the the basic sidewinder, which is the starting ship. So a friend of ours called Charlie picked it up. Um, so Jess and me jumped in, and we thought, well, let's let's go do some wing missions and see how things go. It started poorly we'll say <laughs> okay because the easiest of the wing missions to do is generally speaking cargo <laughs> missions where it says you will get and here's where the, the credit number jumps in you will get 10 million credits each whoa if you transport this very large number of items from this base to this base okay it's like okay that's great so with three people charlie with his carrying capacity of two <laughs> me with my carrying capacity of about 390 and my wife who went out and got the biggest widest ship she could possibly buy with her carrying capacity of like 500 Jeez. we can probably do this relatively quickly until 
my wife gets interdicted, which is when you're in basically when you're in, in hyperspace, someone can pull you out of it to attack you, to try and raid your supplies, to scan you. Oh, jeez. So she got interdicted in one of the biggest ships in the game, which doesn't really move very quickly, mm. and was blown out the sky. And we lost 500 items that we were supposed to be delivering. Oh, no. Which immediately fails the mission. And I was wondering what she just posted in a YouTube chat. Yes. And as she, as she mentions in the YouTube chat, she got blown up. And she got sent... The, the area we were in, she got a fine for losing all of the cargo. Mm-hmm. And because she got the fine, she got jailed. So she literally got sent miles away from us. Like, probably, I think it was like 20 jumps away from us. In, to space jail? In a space jail. It's literally, it's a starport that is, it's, a, it's, it's represented as a space jail. It's where you go when you get punished. Wow. Like, it was... Seeing the range of emotions on her face go from, <laughs> this is cool, we're going to help someone start, to... Oh, I've been interdicted. I can escape this. Oh, my ship isn't really great at escaping. Oh no, my frame shift drive isn't charging fast enough. Oh no, I've been blown up. And <laughs> seeing the effort it took her to not snap the controller in half, say "f you, Charlie," and then walk away. Right really? for being thrown in space jail. Yes, and the nine hundred thousand credit fine. Oh, <laughs> yes. So, full credit to her for maintaining the self-control and composure to not do all of those things. Yeah. And it was getting late, and we both had to kind of be in bed soon, so I was just happened to be in a different station. Uh, we found, uh, instead of a delivery one where you pick up and deliver from two different ports, I found one which was source and bring it back here, which is essentially go find a station that's selling this, buy it, bring it back to us, and deposit it here. Mm. All Charlie had to do was pick up two of the items and deposit them. He gets credit for taking part in the goal, and then he gets his share of the payoff, which in my one was 3.2 million, but it was a lot smaller wow. quantity of items because I could only carry a certain amount, and Jess was 20 jumps away in her big fat shift trying to make it its way back. Right. So I thought, well, as long as Jess takes part a little bit, that's fine. Charlie only has to deliver two. He picked up two, came back sold two instead of delivering two had to go back pick up another two bring that back <laughs> and because there's so many resources out there for elite dangerous i just pulled up the uh, eddb which is a great name elite dangerous database nice um put in the name of the station i was at i was like i need to buy tea literally we were buying tea how very <laughs> english where where nearest to me can that be found so, it turns out it was 17 jumps away. I was like, that's not too bad. 17 jumps, that's maybe 15, 20 minutes there. Perfect. I can go there, pick okay. up my stuff, bring it back, and do two journeys, and we'll be done. Like, perfect. Yeah. I forgot to take into account that your jump distance is correlated to the mass of your ship. Oh. It was 17 jumps there. It was 39 jumps back. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't think of the mass. Right. Why didn't I think of the mass? Oh, crap. It was so stupid. And and at this point, it's getting really late. Like, no, we need to finish this. I don't care. We're finishing this tonight. We're getting Charlie's three million. And as soon as we got those credits, I'm bouncing because I need to go to bed. So I'm doing that. I'm jumped all the way out there, then started coming back because it's all based on real-time supply and demand. So there was a port that was nearer, but it didn't have enough to fulfill the contract. Oh, right. Because people have been buying and selling at these locations, and as people buy, the stock goes down. So I could go to that place, buy all the stock, and then bring it all back. But then that would be sold out, so I'd have to make the long jump anyway to, you know, get the additional difference. Mm. We ended up finagling this in such a way where... I ended up on the way back. By the time I was even halfway back to the deposit station, Jess was at that station, called her other ship in, her small ship with a huge jump range, stripped everything out of it just to make cargo space, basically. 
<laughs> just so because the jump range on it w was like my jump range was about 27 light years the jump range on hairs was like 40 something so because mm. the jump range is so much <clears> higher <throat> that when it's it, when it's laden with cargo the jump range is higher again still so she made it out there in like 10 jumps i made it back in like 17 rather than that 30 something that i was dealing with and so literally i buy one that's how many we did it by by Jeez. one item of tea it was enough <laughs> and Charlie who has only been playing the game less than a week now has 3 million credits in his account man which is a really good start off considering it took me probably 6 months to get that in my account yeah so if you're in, in if you do need help with Elite Dangerous it's a lot easier to get started now and Give us a shout. We'll do a wing mission or two. Guess what? There's achievements tied to it, so of course I'm going to keep doing them. <laughs> yeah. um, but give us a shout. We can we can help get you started and get you more prepared quicker for the the trials and tribulations ahead. Um, there's some great stuff coming out about that. I don't know if you guys saw the. Um, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. My wife posted the video about that. This guy's 200 rescue rescue where they essentially used triangulation of light seconds distance to planets to <laughs> figure out where this guy was for the fuel rats. Like, it, Elite Dangerous is amazing. Like, the stories that come out of that game, I get it if it's not something you're interested in. But yeah, Elite Dangerous is It's great. still cool to read about and listen about, though. Yeah, it reminds me of... It's a bit like... What's that other one? It's like Elite Dangerous, but it's the MMO version. Uh... I don't know. Uh, it's they have like they have huge guilds. They have wars. They slow down time. Eve Online. There we go. Thank you. It's very much like that, except yeah, a lot less intense. As weird as that sounds, <laughs> considering what we talk about with Elite Dangerous. Yeah, but it's like that. Eve Online is a game where I'm all about reading the stories. Elite Dangerous is a game where I'm all about making the stories. So, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's. Again, if you're not interested, I'm sorry. I'm going to continue to talk about Elite Dangerous until the day I die, probably. So, <laughs> yeah, I do apologize in advance for that. But no, Elite Dangerous is still amazing. Uh, God of War. Ah, uh, yes. So you got to the scene. Yes, I got to a spoiler. Spoiler. A spoiler. Spoiler happened, and then Kratos spoiled. Yes, <laughs> I. I've had such a hard time not talking about this because it's. I'm I'm definitely not going to spoil it here because I a lot of people are in the same boat that you are where they're just starting to pick it up or like it's taking them a while to get through. It's such a fantastic scene yep. and just it's one of the few scenes where I think the game not having a camera cut really really works for it. Yep. Just how much the camera is like spinning around Kratos the whole time for like 15 minutes. It God, it's so good. Yep. It's that whole sequence from the incident in the vault all the way up to um, retrieving what you need. That whole yep. sequence is truly incredible. I love the fact that it's a little foreshadowed at the very, very beginning of the game. There's, a, yes. there's two or three little touches of foreshadowing, which I really, really love. Yeah. The blinder you go into this, the better, so I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like we're almost going to have to do a spoiler cast about this. Just talk about, like, this scene was so cool, and that scene was so cool. Yeah, like, that, that mo like to give you an idea of how great those moments are, my wife is sitting next to me playing Elite Dangerous, pausing the game so she can watch the cutscenes. Yep. That, that should tell you just how kind of cool those moments are, but I really can't say anything. I did... I. Try, I was trying to figure out a way to to express it to you on social media without giving yes. away exactly what it was. <laughs> so I literally, I just copied the, the trophy and I put stickers over everything yep. except for the trophy. Yeah, because even like the icon is... The icon is, is so bad. It's like, I was like, oh, I could just do that and then black out the description. Nope. No, you can't. No. Yeah. But... Such a cool scene. Yes. I think you're now um, past the halfway point. I, I kind of... It made me laugh because I have spent a long time doing a bunch of side missions. 
and I'm looking at all my gear and if I ever takes that destiny approach of your your level is an aggregate of your gear score essentially yeah and I was like I'm wearing fours and fives why is my gear still at level high threes low fours like what am I doing mm. wrong here it explains why because I had a zero in there the whole time until I hit that moment and now it's balanced oh, out right. because it was registering that missing thing as a zero Right, right, I was like, right. Okay, now that makes sense. Now, right. now, now I'm way stronger. It, yes, and literally enemies which were one shot on me before this sequence, I'm now mm. taking them down like crazy, and I feel like finally I might be able to go and do some of those tears that I've been like testing out and then getting one shotted to death. I think yeah, I can, some of those tears are real tough. Yeah, I think I can probably start looking into doing those now. So that. Like that, that story. Like, let's talk about the masterclass of storytelling. It's that. Yep. Because I, I mean, I, I stopped playing it, and like Jess even said to me, I am surprised you you played it that long, because it's established. Like, I can't play with a PlayStation Four controller for too much, otherwise my hands start seizing up. Yeah. And I literally played God of War for like three, four hours today, <laughs> and I'm paying the price now. Because I yeah. literally couldn't put it down. It was one of those things where it was like, <laughs> no, I want to see what happens next. Yeah, it's, it's like one of those great scenes. I think I was trying to talk about it when I played it uh, earlier. That it's sort of like, I don't think I don't think they're going to go there. They're, I don't think they're going to do that thing. And then five minutes later, I was like, maybe, maybe they are going to do it. And then five minutes after that, it's sort of like, yeah, they're doing it. I'm 100% in. Mm-hmm. This is going to be awesome. Yep. Uh, the Let's say the boat moment and the cloud moment specifically yeah. for me were really, really good as well. Where It's like, you know, I don't even have to have played all the old ones. That's still really, really great. Yep. The discussions with Mimir at that moment are, are incredible as well. <sighs> Mimir's so good. Yes, he is. I do like the fact that he keeps calling you brother as well. So, <laughs> yeah. And I like the fact that Nope, nope, can't say it. Nope. Yeah. We'll say no more because. Error on the side of spoilers. Yes. Uh, and my final game this week, and this is a really good transition game over to you because I get the feeling that this is going to be two sides of the coin, shall we say? Okay. Let's talk about No Man's Sky. Oh, sure. I thought we were going to talk about Celeste. Sure. The so No Man's Sky is released on the Xbox. Mm-hmm. It has all its updates and it has the new next expansion and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's the one point five version. Yes. First and foremost, let's talk about that price discrepancy. How much uh how much was it? Fifty dollars. <sighs> okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When on PC it runs at about twenty and on PlayStation 4 it runs at twenty five. Yeah. That is problematic. If it was the Switch, I could understand it completely because the Switch is a whole different ball game. Yeah. Xbox is essentially the same architecture as the PlayStation 4 right now. I think th- my only counter to that would be that on the Xbox One, you get a much smoother 4K experience. Okay. Um, on PS4, 4K is not good. And is it's 1080p 60. Um, it is 4K kind 20 of. to 40. Oh, okay. yeah. So I I usually have super sampling turned on on my PS4 since I have a pro but a 1080p display. Uh-huh. And um, the frame rate was really not great until like doing things like mining yeah. was 20 frames until I turned that off and now it's 1080p 60. So um, I have heard uh, that the 4K experience on Xbox One X has been pretty smooth overall. So, I believe we talked about, just before E3 about how Jess doesn't watch E3 because she gets ten, tends to get taken away in the hype train. Mm-hmm. It happened. So she bought No yeah. One's Guy. Um, okay. We started playing it together. She loaded up a planet first. She was on a toxic planet straight away. God, I hate that they do that. I loaded up on a planet, and I was on a fire planet straight away. I, 
One of my biggest problems with this game continues to be the ability for you to start on a planet designed that, to hit, yeah. Yeah, like I I I genuinely think that it should very heavily weight you towards a planet that won't take every planet is going to take down your your life support. That's just how the game works. Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah, but having to continually like find stuff to recharge your shields or like you can't stray that far from your ship because your ship will recharge your shields that's just not fun when you're trying to figure out how to move and like how to mine stuff yep i believe just died within about maybe 60 seconds of loading up yeah because it was a very toxic planet that sucks Uh, that that shouldn't happen I struggled to find shelter from the heat of the planet I was on. Yeah. Eventually, we got it working, and Jess jumped into my world, and we started playing a little bit together. And it was going, nice. it was going pretty good. But it's not great. Okay. So, let me get the negatives out of the way first. I don't like the controls. Yeah, it fe- they're they're different. Yeah, they're different. It feels very floaty. Why is sprint on the right stick? Why can I not switch <sighs> it to the left stick? I, I have no idea. As far as I can tell, the left stick does the scanning, which in my opinion makes more yep. sense in my head to be looking around, click for scan. Moving yep. around, click for sprint. It makes more sense. The fact that you... I, I, for, for me as a Destiny player, where left stick is to sprint... Uh, it's killing me. <laughs> Every single first-person shooter, left stick is sprint, yep. right stick is melee. That's yep. kind of just the way it always is, unless it's a more specific melee thing, like Destiny, where it's an <clears throat> ability. Yeah, and in No Man's Sky, melee is going to be your right bumper. Yep. So, I don't like the controls. I didn't like the fact that I was punished for starting the game. Which yep. we... but so, on on that note, for anyone who's who is interested in starting No Man's Sky, I've put about 10 hours into this new version. Um, I I started a, a new save because um, I hadn't played in I think like six months or something mm. like that. Um, if you're starting a brand new game for the first time that you're playing No Man's Sky, if you start on a planet like that, delete your save, start back over. Yep. I, I think the the level of frustration that comes with trying to survive on a planet that's trying to kill you is not worth. Is not worth it. You're gonna start with the same ship. You're gonna start with the same Omni tool and and exosuit and all that. Just restart your game, mm-hmm. which is a which is a crappy solution. But that's the one we got. Yeah. Uh, so what else don't I like? Uh, don't not a huge fan of. Let's just the menus. Let's just talk about the absolute poop show that mm. is the menus and the interface in the menus. Yeah. Enough with the mouse control stuff, people. <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 doesn't work for Destiny. It works a little bit better here. I just found out before we came up here that apparently you can use the D-pad when you're looking at, you know, your exosuit or your ship or your freighter and you want to switch between categories, like for your exosuit you do inventory cargo or technology you can switch between those with your d-pad left and right d-pad i had no idea about that so that'll make that a lot easier yeah uh what else so we played the we played the tutorial missions up to the point where we got our ships off the ground and running Mm -hmm. i hate the flight controls with a passion do i hate these flight controls yeah, I had someone ask me online, oh, I don't remember who it is, I'm sorry, um, you know, how No Man's Sky stacks up to Elite Dangerous. I was like, Elite Dangerous is a, f- is a flight game. Mm-hmm. It's a game about you flying. No Man's Sky is just A to B. Yeah. Like, you're just using your spaceship to get to another place. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, that is me being an elite elitist in this case. Sure. But those flight controls are horrendous. Like, if you go back and you listen to me talk about... I think it was when we started playing Battlefield 1. I mentioned how they basically turned the flight controls into um, Kiddie's first flight control flight game. Mm-hmm. Because it's literally everything is done on one stick. And the camera is your right stick. And, and like there are, all the controls were shifted around. And it was much harder to do 
very complicated things. It was even harder to do the complicated things because of the way the controls were shifted around to. Right. Like, I Battlefield, let's say, 3 and 4, you stick me in a helicopter, it takes something special to take me out of that helicopter. In Battlefield, even in a plane, it takes something special to take me out of the planes in those games. You stick me in a in a in Battlefield One, and I'm crashing and burning in about four seconds flat because I just cannot handle the. Even though they're supposed to be simple controls, when you've spent your entire life playing flight games, having two sticks do stuff. Right, right. Switching that down to one stick makes everything so confusing, and so. Go ahead. So, how would you say? Because I don't, I don't hate the flight in this. Like, it took me a long time to sort of figure out how to how to use it. But I, I don't play a lot of space flight sim games. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like there's just a an element of control? If you were to compare this to Elite Dangerous, you think it's just the simplicity of the flying in No Man's Sky is what frustrates you? I think it's a mixture of the simplicity, meaning that I don't feel like I have control over it, if that makes any sense. Whereas in Elite, when I'm playing Elite, I feel like, okay, there's the mail slot that I need to go through to get into this station. I have full control to position myself exactly where I need to be to just go Mm -hmm. straight into that mail slot. Because if I don't do that and I hit the side of the space station, I will blow up and die. Okay. Whereas in No Man's Sky, like I didn't feel like I had any control or or any way of knowing where the entrance into the space station was, which was the first thing I did when I got off the planet was there's a space station, I'm gonna go to it. Yeah. And it's literally just a big cube in the sky. And there's a green beam of light coming out of it. Like a very small mm. green beam of light. Yeah. I missed it. I had to turn around and re rotate myself and refigure out where the where the entrance was. And then I had to go into that, at which point it just takes over. And that's fine, taking over like a docking sequence. That's I understand yeah. that completely. We have docking computers in Elite Dangerous for that exact same purpose. Um, I got to the space station and it was a bunch of people talking a bunch of languages I didn't understand. Mm. I think at this point we've probably been playing it for about two hours or so. Um, okay. So the next planet was there for us to go and explore. So we we went down, we landed on the planet, and Jess said she's not feeling it, and that's okay. You know that's fine. So we used the wonderfulness, which is the Microsoft uh, digital refund policy, and requested a refund for it. Okay. Quick sidebar here: one per year. Uh, that's rough. Okay. Yes, it's very rough. It's not rough if you buy three games a year. Sure. It's very rough if you buy. 200 games a year (laughs) yeah that's when it becomes a bit of a problem right so we stuck two hours into it i mean it's one of these games where i'm i'm torn because i do feel like the game has more to offer Mm -hmm. but at this time in my life i don't have the time to stick into a game that's not really great at tutorializing me it's not really great at allowing me the control that I'm looking for for that type of game like for as a great example of this and again I'm bringing back the Elite Dangerous comparison Jess smashed into the side of this space station while we were trying to trying to figure out how to get into it and she mm-hmm. basically did like a 50-50 grind all the way down the side of this space station it's like yeah. I'd turn to her and I said if that was Elite you'd be dead by now yeah. and she's like yeah I would have been and it was the there was no no negative consequences to it. And I, I get it. It's not a game about the negative consequences. It's it's about the exploration. It's about seeing stuff. And don't get me wrong, I think the game has the potential for real beauty. Like, the, the second planet we landed on was a non-toxic, non-hazardous environment. Mm-hmm. And it was surrounded by rings, and it was beautiful, and it was gorgeous, and it was great to look at. But at the same time, I just spent two hours on a planet that was trying to kill me, just trying to land the controls. Right. And, like, the literally the next planet over in the same system is fine. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Uh, it needs a bit more a bit more care with that kind of thing. And that's something, again, Elite Dangerous does fantastically. When you start a new game in that, you are in a server by yourself. There is no... Yeah, they instance you off. Yes, there's no other humans there. It's That's your system to play around in and explore 
and figure out what you want to do. You will not see another human being until you do a frame shift drive jump to a different like system, and that's right. when you'll get merged in with everybody else. But it was like two hours of headbutting against a wall and running through firestorms and trying to find shelter for a ship which I didn't like the controls of. And I'm sure, like, I know I've been reading all about, like, you playing, you've got frigates now and there's a whole bunch of additional stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Right now, for me, it ain't worth 50 bucks. Yeah. Maybe in six months' time when it, it goes on deep discount on a sale or something. That will that will be a game that I'll pick up for twenty bucks, twenty five bucks or something, and maybe then I'll put some time into it. But fifty bucks just it seems a little ridiculous to me, especially when you consider the games being out for a long time on other platforms and other yeah. games that have done this. The Witness came out on Xbox One, and I think it was like fifteen bucks at launch. Yeah, like games have learned that you can't keep the same sale value like throughout and I can't tell if this is just them being a little greedy or thinking that it's worth it for a market they've never had the option for before yeah or like was it is it part of the porting or is like that from 505 games are they saying you know like for the physical version yeah I don't I don't know and I think it speaks a lot to how much I think No Man's Sky is going to be a hard game for you to get into if you give it a shot again because we have elite no well no because you have elite and because at the point where you're at with elite a little bit of time in elite dangerous right now is very rewarding yes and a a little bit of time with no man's sky at the beginning of the game isn't yet rewarding because you don't know enough of the alien languages and you don't have enough reputation with some people and and all these systems haven't really like you haven't even made your first Black jump to jump. another no. system so like you're still in the tutorial area which shockingly the tutorial in this is way better now yeah um, I'll, like if it's way better and i struggled with it as much as i did like, because, it was virtually non-existent before. Yeah, because those tutorial messages are terrible. It's like, go in your menu and hit A to do this. It's like, where do I hit A? And it turns right. out I had to hit A on an empty slot in my inventory, which it didn't tell me to hit A on an empty slot. <sighs> yeah, some of that stuff is still not great. And I, I, I really wish Hello Games would have done more work to the tutorial. You know, like... Like we're talking about, your first planet has to be somewhere that's safe for you to be. It has to be more forgiving, um, 100%. Yeah. Um, I'm really enjoying this new version of No Man's Sky, mm-hmm. but I think because I put so much time in when it launched, I got that that base level understanding of the game, where it's like, okay... Every time I go to, uh, and it's it's massaging those expectations a little bit, where, like, every time I go into a space station now, which thankfully they have completely redone, um, you know, the right-hand side of the space station are all the people that you can use to upgrade your, your equipment. Yep. So, like, the one guy that sells you upgrades for your exosuit if you talk to the holographic suit behind him you can spend money to upgrade the slots in your suit so you can hold more stuff um before you used to have to sort of get lucky and find one of those um you can way more easily buy upgrades for your suits technology your ship technology your omni tool technology um and installing those is way easier now even though it's still really not intuitive um, on uh, on PS4, you hover over the technology and you hit uh, the install button, which is, I think, square. You unfortunately have to, like, page over to the place it goes to and then pop that in, yep. which, why it doesn't take you right there is uh, surprising. Um, I think the thing for me is I like that they kept the core of No Man's Sky intact and then 
I know they did this with like Atlas Rises and the Foundation update and and some stuff with the next update. Is they took the core of No Man's Sky, which I really enjoy, which is once you learn the systems and you put a, put a couple hours in to get over that crazy high tutorial hump. Yeah. I feel like after that, it's a very relaxing game. Um, and I think part of what the next update I does that I really like is some of the stuff you've already talked about where like there are ringed planets now, which is really great. Um, they have plants have clouds above them, which makes it way more interesting. The terrain generation is far more interesting than it's ever been before. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of screenshots of stuff like that. I mean, stuff like that looks beautiful, and stuff like that is is things I'm interested in. Like, I love that sense of wonder or exploration. Mm -hmm. Not for fifty dollars in this kind of game that's currently running twenty elsewhere. Not for the amount of time yeah. that I'll have to feel to put into it, because I don't have that time right now. I've got other things I need to be playing, games I need to get cleaned off my slate. Uh, Dan Bag in chat does ask a question which I'm curious about, which is like, how long do you think you need to put in before you get to that? Is it like the first system jump kind of thing? Yeah, once you get the first system jump, I feel like, which is probably the, the next thing it will teach you... Um, I'd say maybe three hours is probably uh, about there, unless you totally... It's probably a little bit less time if you continue to restart your game and, and get a better um, get a better planet to start on. Because um, once you do that, you really have the basics of, here's how I fuel my ship to sort of... Um, you know, do the hyperdrive through a, a system that I'm in. Mm. Here's how to get fill up my launch thrusters. Here's my how I fill up my warp uh, cells and to get from system to system. And I think by that point, it starts introducing you to more of the story. Yeah. Um, that it might have introduced to you a little bit. I don't know if you started getting some um messages transmissions the that were just the number 16 repeated yeah um yeah that's some of the the story stuff they're introducing to you i think i think it's hard because i think if you didn't have elite dangerous it would probably be a lot easier to encourage you to stick with no man's sky um but i think if you have two hours to spend on a saturday night that two hours is going to go a lot further in Elite Dangerous. And that two hours in No Man's Sky is still sort of going to be a lot of trying to figure out how to manage the game and try and figure out how to... Unless you have someone like me that's like, um, you know, you know, go to the space station, go to this, do these things, you know, talk to these, you know, focus on learning languages and here's what you want to look for when you go on a planet um dime bag in chat says the goal is still the same reach the center of the galaxy of the universe sort of so there's there's basically two primary modes in the game now uh one is normal which is just no man's sky that is play the story or don't there there's now now with the um a a much more uh a much more deliberate mission system uh it's easier to figure out how to do what you want to do but one of the missions you can always keep as the one that you're uh you're focused on right now is just go explore who cares what you're going to do um the other one is creative mode and that strips out any of the um consequences for really anything you have and it's basically find a planet go build a cool huge base on it and like build your rovers and stuff yeah um so i i certainly can understand where you're coming from that i, I already liked no man's sky mm -hmm. um knowing that it's an, an incredibly divisive game um especially for a price point that is probably about 20 dollars higher than i'd like to see it come out on two years later on another platform yeah um so my investment for the the ten hours I've spent so far has been fairly low because Install I already have the updates. 
Yeah, and like I already have the the foundational knowledge of No Man's Sky, so it's a lot of oh well. Here's all right. Well, they simplified how to fuel up your ship. Oh, okay, cool. That's way easier now. Yeah. Oh, they simplified how to build warp cells. Oh, that's much better now. Okay, cool. I mean, so to be honest, it probably ahead. doesn't help in in our case that we have also between my wife and I, we've sunk probably thirty hours into Astroneer. Which is mm, a yeah. super indie game version of this exact same concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I think when you look at stuff like Astroneer and Elite Dangerous, I think there are... I'm going to say, by and large, those are better games. But I think part of the reason why I enjoy No Man's Sky so much is because it's very relaxed. Yeah. Um, and I like being able to fire it up and not have to worry too much about what I'm going to do. If I want to throw down with a bunch of sentinels on a planet for an hour, which is what I was doing yesterday to sort of uh, expand my milestones, um, you know, I'll do that so I can, you know, talk to Specialist Polo in the, the Anomaly. Um, and if I want to sort of build a base, I can do that, but you know, I never really feel like, I feel like part of what um, really entices you guys to Elite Dangerous is some of those consequences and it being more of a, I don't want to say a hardcore game, but it's a, more of a serious it's, space flight sim yeah, game. Yeah, it's more simulation opposed, than anything else. Yeah, which... I can appreciate, but which scares me about Elite Dangerous. <laughs> As it should. But part of what I like about No Man's Sky is the exploration yeah. and taking photos and working on my milestones and learning languages and the search for the perfect home planet that I can eventually build my big base on and like it's um, it's a game about create a teleporter so I can always come back there you know that's the stuff that really entices me rather than um, it being a a space game yeah it's the it's the bars that you have you can fill yeah it's the goals that you can complete like yeah I mean I get it and like I said it's something I'm interested in but 50 bucks right now like that's a big price point to ask for people who are in the process of a whole bunch of financial like planning and making sure that everything's okay Mm -hmm. like it's a lot to ask for a game that's like you said two years old on other platforms and cheaper elsewhere so i i feel like if it had come out on xbox one at 30 dollars maybe even 40 that probably would have been a much easier pill to swallow. It's very easy for me because I I spent my seventy dollars on it when it came out. Yeah. And I just popped my disc back in, downloaded the like seven gig update, and then uh, you know, quote unquote for free, I was back into No Man's Sky. Yeah. Um but you know, when you look at um someone on I think it was Discord or Twitter this week told me that they were interested in picking it up. And the big question for me this that people have been asking me this week is is it a good time to come back to it? I'd say if you own it right now, yeah, I I think for free it's start a new save game, come back, see how it feels, see if that feels better for you knowing that I'm one of the few people that genuinely has always enjoyed No Man's Sky. Yeah. But I just looked at it on Steam. It's $30 on Steam right now. Most people can get it used on PS4 for about 20 bucks. Someone sent it to me. They got it for, for 15 20 bucks. That's a pretty great price, even if you don't super like it. But I, I agree with you that $50 is, is pretty... Is pretty hard to swallow for a game that, let's say, it has, it's been divisive is pretty much an understatement. Yeah, and it, I mean, you you know me, the audience I'm sure knows me at this point. Like, if I had the time to sink into it, to get over those hurdles, to be able yep. to spend the time with it, that, you know, I might end up loving it, but the middle of summer is not that time for me. <laughs> yeah, your your work schedule in summer is is yeah. I mean, so this would be more of like a winter game for you. That's what I'm thinking because I mean I'm pulling anywhere between like sixty to eighty hour weeks during the summer. 
Yeah. And over the winter, I'm hoping that will drop to 40 to 50. <laughs> a so, normal work schedule. <laughs> yes. So hopefully yeah. by that time, if it goes on deep enough sale, I can think about picking it up then. And yep. depending on how I've done with plowing through everything I need to plow through for the game of the year discussions, um, which I, that's how much I'm planning my time, by the way, folks. Like I'm yeah. making sure to play things that will come up in that discussion now, and it's yeah. July. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, if you do decide to to go back on it uh, later, then you know there'll be even more patches. They'll have a lot of the. The issue smoothed over. Like, right now, I'm running into a bug that I think I just figured out how to resolve. So, one of my favorite things is one of the early um, systems I jumped to in the game. Um, and right now, I'm just sort of pushing towards the center of the galaxy where richer and more difficult planets lie. Um, I came out of a hyper jump, and there was a frigate that was being attacked by five or six pirate ships. Um, so I decided, you know what? I've never saved a frigate before. Let me do that. Yeah. So I blow up all these pirate ships and it, it was, I, I'm still on my starting ship cause I haven't found another one I liked yet. Um, so that was fairly challenging. Um, and the captain says, Hey, I want to just give you a, a quick thanks. I want to shake your hand. Why don't you come on my frigate? It's like, yeah, sure. Why not? I've never been on one. Because I stopped playing before that update came out. So, basically what happens is when I went to the control room on the frigate, he said, Hey, uh, I'm not crazy about being a captain. Do you want to take my frigate? And I said, sure, let me see how much it'll cost. Because it's usually like $50 million for giant ships like this. Yeah. It it was free. Yep. <laughs> So I totally got a giant frigate of my own that I can now store six ships in along with all of my inventory for free. And it those frigates, I just found out, use way less fuel to do jumps between systems. Yeah. Um, until I filled up my engines completely and ran into a bug where it said, hey, man, your hyperdrive has no fuel. Um, I was doing a little bit of research on it before we started recording. Is this the Gandhi thing again? No, apparently there's a bug where if you store another... So I, I found an upgrade for the hyperdrive on my normal starship. I stored that in my frigate. So you could use so it the on game... a ship that when you get a ship that you like, you can use that on that. Right, it's basically a red engine so I can go to red planets. Um, basically... Now, because there's this weird bug introduced with this new update that apparently they're going to fix pretty soon, the ship thinks I'm trying to use the, the stored, empty engine <laughs> instead of my completely full engine that's in the frigate. So I need to, I need to scoot that around. It's one of those things where it's like, all right, from a, a logic standpoint, that makes sense. Yeah. The sooner you could fix this bug, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, but I. I, the hard part is No Man's Sky is 100% not a game for everyone mm -hmm. and I completely appreciate that and I, I'm really happy that you and Jess gave it a shot and I'm also very happy you guys tapped out early when you sort of figured out it's not for you yeah. um, as opposed to like just sticking with it for another 10 hours and be like no I st I've, like I spent 15 hours with this game and I still hate it um, I'm alive. Uh, yeah I, I really wish that there was some sort of demo or something like Dimebag in chat says No Man's Sky sounds like an Xbox Live or PS Plus free game I wish there was a way for people to just try the tutorial some way because for me as soon as I started the game originally and as soon as I started the game again I'm a hundred percent in there's something about it that just clicks with me yeah it's Minecraft was the same for us like that's the thing is like I I have the feeling I would love this game 
so much if it did a better job of onboarding and not feeling right. like it's wasting my time for the first section. Because... Or if you had someone like me that's like, all right, you, you found a cool planet. I'm going to come help you. Here's how to fill up your ship. Here's how to repair it. Here's how to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, because, I mean, Minecraft, when that came out, that had zero tutorials. Yeah. And the tutorials for that were essentially a quick FAQ guide on websites. And yeah. I used those, and it helped because I hated Minecraft until I started using them. And when I started using them, Minecraft just took me completely like like a black hole. I was sucked into it. And yeah, I finally clicked with you. It was one of those games where it was like, I'm doing this to explore, to see what I'm seeing underground, to see the caves, to see the natural formations, to see the different areas right. that you go into, the different biomes. And I feel like this has the potential to be that. Mm-hmm. But not wasting my time when I have a limited time and not wasting exactly. my money when I don't feel like it's very respectful of my wallet right now either. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the time part is the really hard part. Yeah. Um, you know, especially it's the tutorial is so much better. I'll say that again, but it's still not. It, it's it's been a, a problem that the community has been begging for. And I I feel like the way that the universe gets simulated it would probably be a hard hurdle for Hello Games to get over. But like you said, the game desperately needs an instanced planet that you start on. Even if it's just like, here's a planet, one planet that has a moon and a, a space station that will teach you how to do everything you need to get to the next planet, the next system to go to. Yeah, um, I mean... I know I'm. I'm realize I'm going to be very defecating with my words I'm about to use, and I'm not trying to say that coding is easy. But mm-hmm. if planet equals hazard, spawn equals <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah, and, and there just needs to be some sort of tutorial planet. Even if everybody gets the same tutorial planet that yeah. is beautiful and has rings and has dinosaurs on it and everything, and maybe the next planet you get to is just a hellfire. Yeah. That's fine. As long as it's not the very first one. Yeah. Um, which I'll say again, shouldn't be this way, but just keep restarting your game until you get a good planet. Um, but And I've only run into one other person in the game so far. Um, I warped into a, a system, and there was someone that was in um, the system at the same time down on the planet in their own base, um, but I didn't. I decided not to go bother them because they they were building a base, so they're yeah. they're doing their own thing. So, but yeah, I, I still really love No Man's Sky. I completely understand and absolutely respect why you aren't, and I hope that they. I hope that Hello Games continues to improve it because even five or six months from now, when your schedule slows down it'd be great if you could say all right it's 20 30 bucks now they've done all these improvements i now know how to you know start the game a little bit better maybe i'll spend you know a couple hours this weekend getting into it yeah but if not then that's cool too it's 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 not a game that's for everybody nope and that's okay shocker yeah well i i feel like that's such a an uncommon attitude if if we were the the prototypical podcast right now, I'd be like, I can't believe you have hurt me personally by not liking this frustrating game that I love. Why no. isn't everybody on the planet playing Elite Dangerous Boston? I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it, it's it I'm happy that at the at the core of it, I'm happy that both of us have found space games to play because space and spaceships are cool. Yes. 100%. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, but yeah, no, that's all I've been playing, so over to you. Uh, the only other game I've been playing this week is Celeste. Yeah, um, tell me about how difficult this game is because I'm starting it, it tonight or tomorrow, so... It's not that bad. Okay. So there's sort of three levels to this. So... Celeste just playing level to level is really actually not that bad. It's it's very, very smartly designed where you it's broken up by rooms. So like typically one screen is just one room. 
and I feel like the the quote unquote hard part about Celeste is the execution. You can go into a room and say like, okay, I probably need to jump here, dash there, jump, jump, dash, dash, and then I'll be up on the next screen. Um, so finding the solution to a room is is often really easy, and then executing is just sort of figuring out how you go through the paces. Yeah. Um, the next level is getting the optional strawberries, which thankfully the game very early on says these don't do anything and they don't unlock anything. They're just, if you want to collect them all, you can. If you just want to say you have more than your friends, you can. That's about it. On PS4, I know there's a trophy for collecting like certain numbers of them. Those are pretty difficult. Um, those are very platforming heavy, very um, very specific on the things you're going to need to do to, to get them and then get back out. Oh, Super Meat Boy. <laughs> yeah, but they're 100% optional. So it's yeah. almost like Super Meat Boy's... Um, Bandages? Yeah. Where, you know, it's tough enough to pick one up and then unlock something, but you don't have to do it at all. Um, I think I have, like, 15. So I'm on level... I'm about to finish up level 5. I think there's 8 of them. It only took me about 3 hours to get to level 5. Um, and that's with, you know, making mistakes and continuing to try and dying during boss be- boss fights and stuff like that. The third level of difficulty are the B-sides. Yeah, okay. You'll find a cassette tape in a level, and it unlocks a hellish nightmare of levels. Um, <laughs> I will probably never be good enough to finish those. Um, but that's okay, because I'm enjoying based Celeste by itself a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it is because of that design I was talking about, where... It reminds me a lot of the design of, of Super Meat Boy, like you said, where it's you can see the level and often it's one screen or maybe it's sort of a longer level. But you have a really good idea as soon as you look at the level cause it, because it keeps building on what it keeps teaching you. Yeah, it's the foundation of knowledge. Yeah, like you just you already have a good idea. You know, you're going to start a new level, so it's going to teach you something else. And but at its core it's still all about jumping and then you can dash once until you land on a platform and then your dash recharges yeah um so it it sticks really well in on those con- those conventions and it sticks really well on its rules um i think the biggest thing for me is like super meat boy it just feels right like the controls are tight enough and it just it feels if I dash off in a wrong direction, it's because I pushed the buttons incorrectly. It's not because the game tricked me into doing something. You know, yeah. I just I made the mistake, so I need to try and do it better. And the respawn times are incredibly fast, which it's, is part of the reason why I'm I'm enjoying it so much. Is I make a dumb mistake and I fall down a platform, uh, fall down a pit, and I die. That's fine. It's less than a second to respawn. So I can laugh it off and say, like, all right, fine. All right, I'll just, I won't do that again. Yeah, stuff like um, that is key for this kind of game. Like, the fast, mm-hmm. the fast restart. People, Tony Hawk's nailed it. How a game's still getting it wrong today. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, I, I'm very happy with how it controls. I'm really happy with how much story there is. I, I wasn't expecting there to be uh, that much. The music is fantastic. I, I think the art is really good. I, I'm I'm really enjoying it. And I, I'm, I'm surprised at how quickly I'm moving through it. Not saying that I'm, you know, f- amazing and I'm not going to be doing any speed runs or anything, but um, I'm happy that the the base non-optional stuff in the game is fairly accessible. Yeah. So, yeah, Celeste is really great. Awesome. Um, and that's all I've been playing. And actually, that's our episode for this week because I, I, I was wondering. Oh, after I start getting talking, you know, we start talking about games. Am I going to start feeling better? The answer to that is no. So we're gonna. No, Boston's gonna die. 
Yeah. Well, actually, I'm going to go get something to eat and go edit so I can Yay. just lay on the couch for the rest of the night. <laughs> um, if you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Uh, all the links to all the places you can contact us and, and send us stuff are on the right-hand side of the page, including the Discord server. Uh, we were just talking about Celeste. That's our game club game this month. I think we still have like three weeks until we, yep. we're going to talk about the recap. So you've got plenty of time to, to start and play that. Um, uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash E1M1. The ones are numbers. Uh, come over there, get some cool behind the scenes and exclusive episodes. Uh, early access, you know, there's a brand new episode of uh, Old Dog New Flicks that just came out for what movie was it? Frozen? Yes. Frozen yeah. this month. Yeah. So go check that out. Um, and there'll be a new episode of, um, uh, dynamic soundtrack here coming out in a couple days on the first of the month. Um, both of those are available on the five dollar tier, so that's the real sweet spot. Uh, Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, all those places you can find us. Go subscribe, and it will let us let you know when we go live. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye. I only have three titles. I like five. Oh, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yes, five. Wait, four. Um, who knows? Uh, air on the side of spoilers. Oh, that one's good. An elite elitist. <laughs> Spawn equals no. Hellish nightmare and the foundation of knowledge. Um, uh, I have space jail. How very English. <laughs> uh, why didn't I think of the mass? And err on the side of spoilers. Oh, why didn't I think of the mass? Is pretty good. Yeah, I like that one a lot. <laughs> yeah, Dimebag, just send your questions in. We'll get them. Uh, we'll get them next week. Um, any ones you feel particularly strongly about? Um, I. I kind of <sighs> like. Why didn't I think of the mass? Yeah, that's pretty good. <sighs> I'm I'm torn between that and err on the side of spoilers. <laughs> Yeah, both of those are really strong. I can do a coin flip. I've got a quarter right in front of me. I was just going to do it on Google. Tails, so err on the side of spoilers. Okay. All right. Let me circle it. Whip. <clears throat> All right, let's get started in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 562 for July 30th, 2018. Error on the side of spoilers. Redacted happens to redacted. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much everyone for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. And we can stop recording. <laughs>